Hi everyone, let me first start by saying that I appreciated your positive feedback that I got for the previous recording and uh, for the tips and suggestions that you have made and uh, the one that I will apply from now on is I will not open the book randomly because some of you may be already reading the book so I don't want to spoil it for you by reading ahead. So, for this video, I will simply read the beginning of chapter 1 and then I will continue for uh, where I am left off. Uh, for those of you who are just tuning in to this video series, it's about the book The 13th Mage by Inelia Benz. I hope you can see that. And here is chapter 1. A slight tremor shook the small village of Santo Cras, making the swallows in the old tower fly out in fright. One or two people stopped walking, and a few put down their glasses in the bar across the plaza. Owen put down his quill and looked out of the window. He listened to the swallows and the clouds. The breeze was whispering too. Was it time already? He went to the bathroom and stood in front of the mirror. He'd have to shave. His beard was much too long. How old was he now? Sixty? Forty? He'd have a better idea when he was shaved. Time seemed to fly in Santa Cruz. It was a pity he had to leave the village. Coming out into the world meant a huge amount of paperwork and adaptation. If only he hadn't made that prom promise to Eoiv. He would be able to stay invincible for a few more decades and get some real work done. What was that tremor, Owen? said the rasping voice coming from the dreaded face that looked at him from behind the mirror's reflection. Great Rosini, it's a great honor to have you in my humble abode. If I may be of assistance, I believe it is a keeper moving through the dimensions. Great Rosini was the staff holder, the great elder, the one to be obeyed. Although Owen didn't particularly want the great Rosini to know that a keeper was moving through the dimensions, he had no way of lying. He knew that the best way to avoid having to tell Rosini about his personal work was to keep it so hidden, so quiet, that he would never ask about it at all. Do you know what it is the Keeper wants, Owen? Yes, Great Rosini, it is a matter of the witches. How come you buy this information? My stepmother, she informed me of the Keeper's arrival today. Witches. Well, can't be anything important, then. Be, we be well, Owen. It is not healthy to be mixing with those types. But seeing as it is your stepmother, I shall let it pass. Said the spectral image before vanishing. Owen sighed in relief. He couldn't remember the last time he'd had a visit from the great Rosini. But it was not something he looked forward to. Not now. Getting the staff wasn't a matter of education or birthright. It was simple ability. The great Rosini had that ability and had been holder for as long as Owen could remember. Owen wanted the staff. Most other council members were content to have been allowed to join the ranks of the council. It was a great honor in and of itself. Owen, however, wasn't. He had known from the day he found out about his nature as an elder and the existence of the council that the staff would, would one day belong to him. He had traveled all worlds known to immortals. He had studied and practiced every possible craft, but it was to no avail. The great Rosini had a few hundred years advantage on him and would forever be in front of Owen if he didn't do something drastic about it. 
he could do something about it, if he only was left alone to do his work. But Eoif wouldn't see the importance of his quest. No witch would. They were small-minded creatures. Now he would have to work on a promise made when he was no more than a child. It was humiliating. To pass the keeper's test. This is what he had promised to do as a child. Pass the keeper's test. No two tests were the same, of course. Each person had had a unique test especially designed for their own particular needs. If he had chosen the way of the witch, he would have had to do the test hundreds of years earlier. It was something witchlings did in their teens. If only the way of the witch wasn't such a simple craft, he might have had a chance of failing the test, he thought, and then his stepmother would leave him alone. But even if that was the case, there was also the matter of mage pride to think of. If word got out that he had failed a witch's test, he would be the laughingstock. He looked over at his ordinary staff. He didn't even bother to carry it around with him anymore, not unless other mages were around. Not to worry, he would continue his work on the staff in his spare time. There was really no way he would let the great Rosini increase his advantage. Now that he thought of it, he realized Rosini must be completely insane. No one in their right mind would insist to be called great anymore, even though it was the right title for that post. He put down the shaving blade and stared in horror at his new face in the mirror. He had clearly lost track of time, and now didn't look older than twenty. His hair was jet black, not a spot of white anywhere, and his eyes looked larger than he remembered them, bright too, shining. He couldn't believe it. This explained his thoughts about the great Rosini. After all, he himself had always wanted to be called the great Owen. And the staff, when the staff came to him, the great Owen. He laughed out loud, laughed so hard that his belly aged. He was hungry, he was starving, damned be youth. Next, it would be spots and uncontrollable erections. He opened the window and smelled the air, freshly baked bread and cakes, local Magdalenas probably. He hadn't had Magdalenas for years, it was the Spanish version of muffins. He loved them. As he walked toward the bakery, he could feel the mid-morning sun hitting his pale skin. He couldn't remember the sun burning so much before. Pedro, Maria's teenage son, likable young man, he projected before walking to the bakery. Mrs. Martinez was serving Carlos, the garage attendant. Owen remembered watching them play in the plaza when they were no more than toddlers. Hola, Pedro. How is your mother today? She's fine, Mrs. Martinez. I'll have two breads and a bag of magdalenas. Tell her I asked after her, won't you? said Mrs. Martinez, handing him his bread and cakes in a bag. He noticed her breasts as she leaned over the counter and was unable to move his arm to take the bag. He blushed uncontrollably, finding himself incapable of taking his eyes off the little beak, the little bit of black laced brassiere showing just where Mrs. Martinez's breast met. The older woman smiled and leaned a little more. Come back at two, she said. I always have a few paritas left over. No charge. So this is it for today. Um, I know a lot of you have mentioned their desire to have an audiobook, and we'll see if that's something that we can create. Uh, and if so, we'll let you know. Bye.